Hello everyone and welcome to our next lesson. This one is about making a scatter plot. So um, we talked about what a scatter plot is and the types of relationships that we see in scatter plots. And we've also identified some parts of scatter plots like gaps and clusters and outliers. And today what we're going to do is we're going to be creating our own scatter plots given a set of data. This is the worksheet that we're going to be looking at. So it's called Make a Scatter Plot. And you should definitely have something to write with um, and have this worksheet in front of you. You're not going to need a ruler today because it's not that kind of graph, right? So just a pencil will be fine. If you don't have the worksheet, that's okay. You can still follow along and you can watch as I make a scatter plot, and then that'll just show you, um, you know, how to, how to do it. It's so easy. I'm so easy. This is going to be one of the easiest things ever. All right, so we're going to construct a scatter plot by carefully plotting the points. And we're going to describe the relationship and identify any gaps, clusters, or outliers. So we will be reviewing those things that we learned before. Now, this is our set of data. So we've got hours on the phone and the test grade. OK, so I think you can probably guess where I'm going with that. I would think that the more hours somebody spends on the phone, the lower the test grade is going to be. Um, but we'll see how our graph works out, right? Maybe I'm wrong about that. OK, so first of all, our x values are across the bottom, right? These are the hours on the phone. So these are going to be our x values. Up the side here, this is our y-axis, right? This is going to be the test score. And when we have our table of data, the first column is going to show us the x values, and the second column is going to show us the y values. So we want to make sure that we're looking carefully how our graph is numbered. We're going by ones on the bottom here, right? So even though they're skipping spaces, we're still going by ones. So this would be one right here, and this would be three, and this would be five, and seven, and nine. And you don't have to fill in those numbers, but I think sometimes it's easier. Um, going up the y-axis, again, we're skipping lines here. So right between 0 and 20 means that this is going to be 10, and this will be 30. And again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I just always find that when I have my graph labeled, it's just easier for me to graph the points. All right, so everything's all labeled. I added some extra numbers, and I am good to go. So let's start putting some points on this graph. So our first one is going to be five hours on the phone and a test grade of 50. So I'm going to go down here on the bottom to five hours on the phone, and I'm going to go up here to 50, and I'm going to put a point. And then our next one is going to be two hours on the phone, right? So two on the bottom, and we're going to go up to 95. That's going to be right between 90 and 100. Our next one is three and 82, so three hours on the phone, and we're going to go to 82. Now, it's going to be somewhere between 80 and 90, but definitely closer to the 80, I'd say about there. And you're just estimating, right? It's a scatter plot. It doesn't have to be perfect. Seven hours on the phone and a grade of 44. So that's going to be between 40 and 50, just slightly lower than center. Then we've got two and 70. So I'm going to go two and then up to 70. And you might be going faster than me, but that's OK. We'll compare at the end. And then we've got five and 50. So 5 and 50. Oh, look, we already had one. There's another one. 4 and 66. So 4 and 66. That's going to be right between 60 and 70, a little farther than halfway. Let's see, 1 and 86. So 1 and 86 is going to be like up here between 80 and 90, a little closer to the 90. 7 and 90. So 7 over here, up here at 90. And then we have 8 and 25. So I'm going to go to 8 hours on the phone, and then I'm going to go right between 20 and 30. So I'm just going to go through real quick. I'm going to make my points a little rounder, a little bigger, a little um, more even, you know, in size. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so doing the best I can here. I'm trying to be casual about it. All right, there we go. So here's our scatter plot. And now we're going to describe it. So take a look at this scatter plot right here and think, um, does it look like it's got a positive correlation? Like as the hours on the phone is increasing, does it look like the test scores are also increasing? Or is it a negative correlation, right? As the hours on the phone are increasing, does it look like the test scores are decreasing? 
So when I look at this, I see definitely a negative correlation because it looks to me as though these points from left to right are going down on the graph, right? They're starting up really high, like near 90, uh, 90, 95-ish. And then by the end of the graph here, they're definitely down lower, right? This one's about 25 down here. So I definitely see a negative correlation. So that's one way that I would describe it, is I would say that this graph has a negative correlation. And then I want to look and see if I see any gaps or any outliers or any clusters. And when I'm looking at this graph, I don't really see anything except one outlier. Do you guys see where that outlier is? I hope so, because I think that this point right here looks really out of place as far as this data is concerned. So I would say that this is our outlier, right? Remember, an outlier is kind of like an outsider. It just doesn't really belong, right? Everything else is kind of going in a nice line here from left to right. But then we've got this outlier just up here. This is a person who spent seven hours on the phone and still got a 90, right? So that's kind of not really fallen in with the trend, if that makes any sense. So we could just say there's a negative correlation. And then if I wanted to describe my outlier, I could say there's an outlier at, and you can always just write the ordered pair for the outlier. So we can say there's an outlier at seven, and that was 90. That's it. Right? How easy was that? All we had to do was plot a bunch of points on a scatter plot and then talk about what we saw. All right, let's look at the one on the bottom of the page. So on the bottom of the page, this time we've got another set of data, another relationship. This time we've got fat and we've got calories, right? So we're going to assume that's the fat content in the food. So that's going to be our X value. Calories are going to be the Y value. And if we look on our graph across the bottom, the x-axis is showing us the fat in grams. And then up the side, we've got the calories, and that's going to be our y value. So if you wanted to, you could take a minute and you could finish labeling the graph just like we did before. That might be helpful. Um, we're skipping spaces here. So we have a 0 and a 4. That means this is a 2 right here. And then we have a 4 and an 8. So that's going to be a 6 and a 10. So this one's going to be a little bit, I don't want to say harder, but just require maybe a little bit more thought when we're graphing our points. We're going to have to look more carefully. So we've got 0 and 40 here. So that means in the middle we would have 20. And then this is going to be 60. And this is going to be 100. And again, you don't really have to do this. I do always like to label my whole graph, though, because it just makes it easier for me, it makes me able to graph my points much quicker. All right, so we're going to have to do some really good estimating here because our intervals are bigger, right? We're not counting by ones on the bottom, and up the side, we're still counting by 20s. So we're going to have to really like look at this carefully. So our first one, we've got 3 grams of fat and 45 calories. So my three grams of fat is going to be here between the two and the four, and then 45 calories is going to be maybe like about here. And then we've got 12 grams of fat and 195 calories. So here's 12 grams of fat, so that's right on the line. And then 195, let's see, we're going up to the top here. It's going to be like kind of close to the 200, maybe up here somewhere. And remember, again, it does not have to be perfect. 4 and 40, oh, finally, there's one that works out nicely. As soon as I said it doesn't have to be perfect, we come up with a perfect point. 11 and 144, so 11 is going to be right between the 10 and the 12, and then 144, maybe like here, right, just a little bit above the 140. And then 7 and 170, so 7 would be right between 6 and 8. And then 170 would be right between 160 and 180. And then we have 9 and 190, so 9 is going to be between 8 and 10. And 190 is going to be here, right between 180 and 200. Then we have 10 and 185. Let's see, here's 10, 180, 185 is going to be like a little lower right there. 2 and 21, so here's a 2. 21 is going to be just a tiny little bit above the 20. 
Then we have 10 and 160, another nice point. And then finally, 6 and 50. So here's 6 and 50 will come right between the 40 and the 60. Okay, so check your points. Make sure they look somewhat like this, right? Again, they don't have to look exactly like this, um, but they just have to be close. And let's talk about this graph. So how would you describe this graph? Would you say it has a positive correlation or a negative correlation? I'm thinking positive because it looks to me that as the number of fat grams increases, so does the number of calories. So I'm going to say this has a positive correlation. Right, as one goes up, the other one is going up as well. All right, now let's look at some other things. So we talked last time in our last video about clusters, gaps, and outliers. So what do you see in here? I see two out of those three things happening in here. So hopefully you do too. One thing I see is a very big obvious gap right here. Look at this big empty space right here. This is a gap if I've ever seen one. So I would say that there is a gap between I'm going to go this way, like 60 calories and 140 calories, right? There's like nothing happening between 60 calories and 140. So if we wanted to describe that, we could say there's a gap between 60 and 140 calories. I'm just going to abbreviate calories. And then I think something else that you might identify here are some clusters. Right, this kind of looks like a cluster to me. I don't know, what do you think? Kind of looks like a group of points, like all near each other. So I'm gonna say that's a cluster. And we might also identify this down here as another cluster, but this one seems a little more cluster-like to me. And if I was describing this cluster, I might say we have a cluster between 140 and 200 calories, right? I could describe it like that. So I'll just put that up here. So we've got a cluster between about 140 and maybe not even 200, maybe like 195 calories, something like that. Actually, I'll write it out because I have room here, calories. Actually, I had room on the bottom one too. I don't know why I didn't do that. So here we go. There we go. Calories and calories. So that's how we could create a scatter plot for this data of the grams of fat and the number of calories. And then also identify some of the different things that we see, right? We see a, a gap here. We definitely see one cluster, right? You might want to identify that one on the bottom as another little cluster as well, right? So if you want to, that wouldn't be wrong. Um, I think I would agree that that might be a cluster down there as well. But I just want you to be, re be refreshed of that vocabulary that we learned in the last lesson. And that is it. That's how easy it is to graph a scatter plot. You don't have to draw a line. They don't have to be in a perfectly straight line. You just want to estimate where they go as best you can. Um, and then just look for some trends in the data. And that's all we're doing with scatter plots. So this was a nice, easy lesson. And I will see you guys next time.